So I've had many questions about, has there been dogs that you couldn't help, Joel? And Allison on Patreon asked me that today. So I'm gonna answer that right now. And plus a lot of you guys, I do stories about killer whales or exotics and you guys are like, we want more dog stories. So I'm gonna tell you some dog stories, okay? Of which one of them I didn't have a filmer for and it was like six months ago. And the other was many years ago and I have a video of that, which I will show you in a minute, okay? One is about a dog attacking me and the other is about a super dog reactive dog many, many, many years ago. So the first story, and, and here's the thing about a dog you couldn't help or something like that. It's, it's a weird question. It's not a weird question. It's hard to answer because what is success? If there's a dog aggressive dog, is, is that dog going to ever go, to, is, is the only way to measure success that dog can go to a dog park? No, there's many dogs that I've worked with, many, many aggressive dogs that I'm like, you'll never go to a dog park. Well, if that's success to the owner, then we have failed. So the owners and I have to come to an agreement on what success is. And that's what you see in these first sessions. And you've seen me say, listen, this dog will never be a dog park dog. Well, the owners might go, oh, well, well, that's then that's not successful. They don't think that because I go, listen, look at what we're seeing here. Dog parks are crazy, but we have to agree on what success is. And then each session we have to move, be moving that way, right? It's a hard thing to measure, right? So I'm going to get into some stories, okay? To not get too long winded with this. About six months ago, I didn't have a filmer for all my sessions until probably four months ago. Okay, so I would just film every other session or whatever. So six months ago, I did a session. It was about this time of night and it was just me and the dog. Guy comes down, he, he drives a long way. He gets here, he's standing right here. We're doing dog stuff. He says, dog is not people aggressive. The dog is only dog aggressive. My worst bite ever was a dog who said, who the owner said, my dog is not people aggressive, my only bite ever, actually. My, the dog's not people aggressive, just dog aggressive. That's what those scars are there from. That's what this guy says. And I go, okay, and usually take him at face value, right? It's not worked out for me twice. And I'll, I'll trust my gut, but generally they're telling the truth. I put prints out there, or not even prints on the deck. I think I was over there. The guy was here with the dog. Dog was in a muzzle, because I believe he was gonna meet Prince. I'm walking up to the guy the dog, it's like a pity kind of dog, okay? I'm walking up to the dog and I'm about to take the leash like you've seen a hundred times, right? And I'm walking up to the guy and I'm going like this and, and the dog has been fine with me up until that point. Walking up to the guy and the dog jumps, not aggressively, just a jump. You guys have seen it and you've felt it from dogs when they literally, when they jump and it's not a nice, I wanna say hi to you jump. It's a hit jump, right? I don't stop for hit jumps. I just don't. It's one of the keys to my success. I'm not gonna go, oh, geez, oh, wow, well, your dog jumped on me. Like, I'm, I'm moving, I'm walking. I, it doesn't, if a dog, unless it's a little frail dog and it's like being sweet, I'm not just gonna run it over. If, that kind of jump is the same as some dude walking down the street and just like shouldering somebody and then just kind of cruising by like, what's up? Like, that's what that jump is, okay? So he, the dog, I go to take the leash, the dog jumps, the dog jumps, I don't stop, I'm walking. The dog jumps and I just walk into him. And I literally, the dog, you could tell no, no one had ever done that to him. Then I take the leash and I'm holding the leash and I look down at the dog and I look in his eyes and I'm like, this isn't gonna be good. And he attacks me. He's got a muzzle on, luckily. I probably have it in my, my left hand. And the dog attacks me with a muzzle on and he just keeps attacking me. And I give the leash to the guy and I go, okay, man, everything has changed at this point. I don't remember what we did in that session, right? We talked about that a lot, but I don't remember how it ended. I don't remember if it was like, here's what we can do and here's how we can, I, I don't remember. But I can't call that session a successful session, right? Should I have, in that situation, should I have probably gone, oh, and let him hit me? Yeah, I probably should have but that's the outlier. That is the one half of 1% when that method doesn't work. So I'd rather do the method that works 99.5% of the time, but there's this one outlier that it made him mad, then I would not do that method because I never wanna make a dog mad, right? It's only, that's one time in 15 years that has happened. I'm not gonna stop the walk-in method. 
Dog just wants to walk. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna uh, uh, deal with a bully at school. Like you don't just like bow down to them. That's not how it works. Okay. So that I can't say that that was a good session. I can't say that I helped that guy. I showed him who his dog was because I didn't do anything mean. I simply kept walking and did not let that dog launch into me. But I can't say I helped that guy that day. Okay. All right. The other one I'm going to show you a video of. I have, I have hesitated to show you guys this, vi this video for the whole time my YouTube channel has been up because it's a weird video in that it's the back room of a store. It's, um, it's, um, the, 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 the video is not good. It's before I ever did YouTube and it's kind of a gnarly video actually. Like, and this is with a dog named, I won't say his name. He's a young dog and he came out here for many sessions afterwards. I did this in a group class, which is completely nutty that I did this in a group class, like out of control crazy that I used to do this stuff in a group, normal dog training class, not a feisty fighter class. So the dog, he's in a muzzle. They're like, he's super dog aggressive. Back in the day, I was like, sign him up for a class, <laughs> like keep the dog safe. But like, I just, I was a cowboy back then. So I'm holding Prince or excuse me, Bosco. He's little dogs in a muzzle, little terrier, little, uh, like a Car not a Karen terrier, but, uh, uh, one of these other terriers I'm holding Bosco, bring him up and you can see in the video, I'll slow it down for you. You can see in the video, the dog comes up, he smells Bosco and Bosco's like, dude, I'm not down with this dog, but like Bosco's done this before and I'm kind of holding him and Bosco's doing his job and the dog's in a muzzle. So no one's getting hurt. And the dog lunges at Bosco right here and try, and you can see he's got a muzzle on, but you can, you can see what he would do if he didn't have a muzzle. He tries to bite. Terriers have strong bites. They're made for biting. He bites and then he tries to twist, but he's in a muzzle. Now Bosco, when a dog's in a muzzle, Bosco or Prince, Bosco definitely, he didn't really get mad at dogs because he's like, you didn't bite me. I'm not going to get mad at you. But with this dog, he's like, no, 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 no. I know what that bite would have entailed. So I'm going at you. Bosco flips around. You're going to see the video. And then Bosco backs this little dude down into a corner, which is exactly what that little dog needed. Okay, here it is in slow motion. Here's what I want you to see about this bite. Watch him back up before the bite right now, back up and then launches and twists. So Bosco is like knew what that bite would have been and knows what he has to do. Look at Bosco. He is not messing around. Now the truth is this dog needed a dog to just probably pin him and hold him down for minutes, to be honest with you. Like even Bosco doing what he's doing, it was not enough. It just wasn't. I mean, this guy didn't get the point. Look at his tail. The tail wagging doesn't mean he's happy, but it means he's stimulated. This dog enjoyed the fight. Um, I don't think he enjoyed it once Bosco had got him pinned up in the corner. And Bosco knows how to counter all his moves. So he would like go this way. Bosco would go the other way and counter everything that he does. But this is Bosco and Prince. This is them at their very best. Okay, this is why I talk about Bosco in the ways I talk about Bosco on this channel. Um, now he's finally pinned in the corner. I kind of walk away. Look, at, he goes back at him. Even though he pinned, he pinned me in the corner, I'm still going to go get him. Bosco flips back around, tells him what's up. And then watch, we walk away again and he's coming back. Okay. People and dogs, they need to be shown that their behaviors are, have consequences. And that's what both these stories entail. Bosco backs him down to a corner and then I call Bosco away. And the minute Bosco turns around to leave the dog, the dog lunges at him again. And that's what Bosco is good at. Okay. That dog came out here and did many other sessions in the future. And we tried positive reinforcement. We tried a lot of things, but the dog needed to be told what's up 
by a bigger, stronger dog over and over and over again. And we got him with other dogs, but he never really, it was success, but like it wasn't my kind of success. It wasn't the people can go and let this dog around other dogs. In this environment, we got him with multiple dogs. He still wanted to attack the dogs, he just didn't. He never played with them. He always knew they would kind of whoop him. It was a select group of dogs. Not hurt him, but like tell him what's up. So I can't say those were success stories. Well, that one was 10 years ago, probably that little dog. The other one was like six months ago. And there's others. Anyone tells you, any dog trainer that tells you they have like fixed every dog they've ever worked with are absolutely not telling the truth. There are, there are crazy people in this world. There are crazy, there are people who can't be helped, okay? There are dogs who can't be helped. There are, they are out there. If you don't think that, I don't, uh, um, you're not living in this world. But they're few and far between, luckily. And if we can get the dog a little better, it's still success, okay? Most of the dogs I have, I have this high bar for success. They hate dogs. We want the owner to be able to take them around a lot of dogs. That's success. That's everybody's definition of success. It doesn't always get there exactly why, like we'd like it, but it's few and far between, okay? So that's your video. You guys wanted a couple more dog stories. You guys, and then Allison asked about uh, uh, maybe not success stories. I would say those two for sure. All right, that's it. Comment, like, and subscribe.